Trust Vote TV report. Who's afraid of vote by mail? An activist agenda in the wake of coronavirus. Trust Vote board members Dr. Robert Fetrakis, Associate Director Lori Grace, and Audit Elections USA founder John Roberts Brakey connected with actress, activist, and co-founder of Progressive Democrats of America, Mimi Kennedy, to discuss vote by mail and how their organizations could work together to answer America's election questions. Yeah, we just, uh, John and I just came off a call that was more California-oriented, Ray Lutz of Citizens Oversight Project, who did magnificent work down in San Diego doing some election forensics. Uh, with a very troubling and troubled registrar down there. I've seen some advocacy work uh, on vote by mail expansion, which is probably the one thing that's gonna happen. There are calls tonight with Ron Biden and Amy Klobuchar, Stacey Abrams is on the case with Let Me Vote. Vote by mail expansion with an excuse for COVID-19 being the medical excuse that is going to have to be accepted nationwide. That is going to happen, okay. Yes. So all these people are gonna be getting mail ballots in the mail, whether they like it or not. In some cases, I'm sure the states will ask for a request from the voter and maybe just not manage to get the mail ballot to the voter as up to 20% mail ballots don't ever arrive at the voter. Or they'll passively say, we're sending one to every voter. And in those cases, we'll have voters not expecting to get a mail ballot and they've never used one before. They'll come in combination with some in-person voting options because a lot of people and a lot of the states are going to want that in-person option maybe because they have bmds like la like you're gonna like it's gonna have and maybe they want to do something with the bmds in la we don't count with the bmds but i think the sns's do so now people are going to go well i never got my mail ballot or they don't even know they were and they show up and they go i'd like to vote here and they go well we sent you a mail ballot so you have to vote provisional we will have an election next fall that could be up to 50 percent provisional ballots you know i call that the surrender rule and you could throw this to me you're there laurie okay so the one thing that i want pda to concentrate on is to research the election code of all the battlegrounds starting with them the battlegrounds and then expand it out but i want to know in the election code as i had to look for tim canova in florida because he didn't know there is a surrender rule in Florida, just nobody had ever brought it up yeah. before, but it's why there's so many provisionals. So uh, I want all of us to know as we advocate what we advocate for, there will be a blizzard of provisionals in LA because of the electronic poll book sign in. We've defeated the surrender rule. You cancel your mail ballot on the spot because you never got it. You don't need an excuse to just say, screw it. I don't, I didn't want the mail. I'm here to vote. You know, it's great, but it requires that you have an electronic sign in. Otherwise you can't do it. Also, right. these advocacy gro- groups, I'm just trying to lay the land so we know what we're exactly. doing. Okay. These advocacy groups are asking for same-day registration. Again, it's, it's only really can be done if you have some version of electronic sign-in. Right. You can't do sa- same-day registration without it. So these BMD systems, including LA's, but it's publicly owned, it's not the private vendor, and it has certain things on it that Dominion and the SNS don't have, but I don't mean to protect that right now. I just mean to explain the difference. Some of these BMDs are going to come with that electronic sign-in. So if you have expanded vote by mail, a bunch of people who never get their ballots because the scheme is don't send them to the black zip codes and they come in, you don't want them on provisional. So you want them to be able to cancel the mail ballot. So you kind of want to have that system, maybe or maybe not. But I want us all to be aware of some of the trade-offs. And what I'm thinking about is what's the easiest trade-off to get the voter to protect herself and defeat the racist fraudsters schemes. I think by law, a mail ballot is a mail ballot. And if you've been sent one, no poll worker can give you another ballot without proof. You didn't use the first one that the registrar sent you. So I'm pretty sure we're gonna run into the surrender rule. And it's not yet an action component for organizers. We need to get the research together first. Absolutely. 
even the people in the states that have been doing their election, you know this, the way you've been going state to state, John. Yeah. yeah. You find maybe one or two people who might know it, or if they don't know it, they recognize the importance of getting to know it, and then they plunge into the Exactly. Region. You know I who see does this all the it? time, Mimi. The election officials. Yep and the gamesters and the vendors. They've got the scheme set up. Anywhere you've got an electronic sign-in, it's like, don't send a mail ballot. Oh shit, they can cancel it. They can still screw around with you at the polls, but the law is on your side if you've got same day registration and canceling the mail ballot. But I don't know what counties have this. I don't know what state law is. In the, at least 11 of the battleground states, we're gonna get a PDA staffer on that job post it and then we can talk about how we how we educate the voters and who does that and then you know we could ask stacy abrams group to do it once we've done the research right now i'm not seeing anybody bring that up as something important for yeah anybody. exactly no you're right I, that, I was... what what i would like us activist community to do is consider the trade-offs and what will make the easiest way for the voter to protect his or her vote in the context of mentioning that electronic poll books allow you to cancel your mail ballot rather than surrender it. And that is a very good way for the voter to foil the surrender rule. One of the problems though, you got a whole new set of problems, at least we have in Ohio with the electronic poll books. Exactly. First of all, they're run by the right to life movement in this state. The Rapp family does all the, the work on those, the one that did the butterfly ballot. Yep. And then the, uh, the problems is people are showing up and finding their names aren't on the polls. Absolutely. Yep. It's, we've had so, that. That happens, Bob, usually at the Secretary of State level, because these are now, because of Help America Vote right. Act, every state has to have a statewide online mm -hmm voter database, and it was progressives and liberals and Democrats who said, we have to have online registration, okay? We'll give you online registration, and then we'll just get in there and screw around with your registration. You'll be surprised at the polls with what you see. We're living with that, I know what you mean. And the electronic poll books, now, Bob, the, I, I, the right to lifers have been in the technology, election technology since, you know, 2002. Bob Ney and all of that. Right. Ralph Reed. So, but now we have it. So, okay. When with our electronic poll books owned, you know, by the city of LA, but, but this is the process, even with an ESNS and a Dominion, you're not on the rolls. They've purged you statewide. Well, damn, I want a same day register. I'm registering right here, right now. And they have to register you and let you vote, but on something called a conditional ballot. But the difference between conditional and provisional in California is big. And what is it? A conditional ballot enters the count stream much earlier than provisional. As soon as your registration checks out, of course, in a corrupt county, it's never going to check out, but here's the process. As soon as your same-day registration checks out, your voted ballot that you voted that day and got put in a conditional voting envelope is taken out of the envelope and becomes a regular anonymous vote card in the vote stream. Provisional ballots, they wait till the end of the election. You mm -hmm. twiddle your thumbs till all the mail ballots are counted too. And the scheme there is somebody's stolen your damn mail ballot, voted it, forged it, it's counted. By the time they get to your provisional, they say Mimi Kennedy voted in this election and they toss it. That's oh, right. conditionals are not treated that way. A same day registration and a conditional vote, a conditional vote will be counted as long as they find out you're actually a resident of that county. And and you're are you referring to California for this or, or what state? Well, that's my point, Lori. I don't know what, how many states I'm referring to, but I do know that a ballot is a ballot and you can't get two. Okay. So I'm presuming nationwide there'll be some version of this, but you won't be able to same day register without electronic poll books. I'm just acknowledging Bob's um, anxiety and mine too about electronic anything, about all this online and digital and data. It's all been used and schemed, but 
we're looking at an expanded new thing, handmarked paper ballot mm -hmm. possibility. I'm just trying to protect that as mm -hmm. best I can. So Mamie, I've been doing and quite a lot of conversations uh, about all this with Bob Petrakis in particular, uh, with Steve Rosenfeld also. And I was wanting uh, Steve Rosenfeld to do the research because he's able to translate things down. He's also a really sharp mind. I also talked with Bob about being on the alert, kind of organizing together with Steve to see if there will be some need for some lawsuits in certain places. You know, for example, John has also been looking into Michigan where they're not wanting to keep the ballot images and, you know, these kinds of things. Um, Steve has a big focus, he has interest in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I know you and I, we're Californians. We really care about California. Are you going to hire Steve to do the research you're talking about? Yeah, he will do the research. He will do the dialing down in a good, excellent journalistic style. Every time I've ever listened to him, any time I've ever read any of his articles, they're so easy to understand. Okay? Yeah, that's it's great. Life. And I've already looked at, uh, I, I remember looking with Bob at, um, at Pennsylvania. We were looking at election rules. It'd be very hard to understand. Um, and when do you think that'll all be uh, collated for the 11 it's gonna, states? It's for the swing states, which is all that I can back up. I think that it'll happen quite soon. Two weeks? Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. Just that the research will be in the hands of Steve Rosenfeld and then Bob and John will, okay. you know, uh, uh, provide, you know, Bob can also provide some legal angles, which are pretty important. Well, here's, here's, here's some thoughts I have on that, Lori, is okay. we've got activists who could, uh, again, under COVID-19, you know, we won't be having meetings. We won't be going door to door. This is right, not right. going to be for election officials. This is for the voter, how to protect yourself. Right. And it, by the way, needs also to be aware of each state's um, for federal election voting calendar. When will they be sending out the mail ballots? That sounds great. Last day, you can request one. Mm -hmm. Are they going to allow a medical excuse for COVID-19? Some governors have already said yes. Some legislatures have already, legislatures said yes. Governor vetoed it. That mm -hmm. gets complicated to find out, mm -hmm. but we must. And how long does it usually take to get a mail ballot in the mail? So if you know they went out October 15th, by October 21st, should you be calling the registrar's office, and we must list the registrar's office's number for every county, and saying, I don't have my mail ballot yet, and then we get to the surrender rule. If you never get your mail ballot, but you were supposed to, are you going to be able to cancel your mail ballot when you get to vote in person, or are you going to end up voting provisional? That Those kinds of questions. Okay. Um, no, uh those are key questions. I think you're absolutely right. Uh, Juanita, one of our uh, major staff person who's been voting 40 years in the Democratic primary, sends her uh, proposal to get the ballot out two weeks ago. She gets it yesterday and it's a Republican exactly. ballot. And there, there had to be new guidelines by the Secretary of State to get her to go in and exchange it at the exactly. Board of Election. As long as you have it, by the way, Bob, you bring up such a good point. The remedy to that kind of problem, I got the wrong ballot, is presenting the thing. But most voters will look at it and throw it out and say, I'll just go vote at the polls and get the right ballot. I've been a poll worker. I see it all the time, particularly young voters and voters who have never done vote by mail before. Oh, that's right. I agree. To start the research now is important because this is state law as it exists now. There might be emergency regulations, but if there are, those will be more well publicized than what existing state law is now. And I have found that you need to deal with the stuff the elections officials know because they're the ones setting a scheme if there is going to be a scheme. And I do know that uh, 
expanded mail balloting if they allow it. They, you know, they give with the right hand or the left hand and with the right hand taketh away. We know this and this is what I want to prepare for. It's my sole focus. Although mm -hmm. the Ray Lutz phone call that John and I were just on was hair on fire, horrible about signature matching. And maybe someone else will take up that problem Agreed. because that is even harder to remedy because it requires citizen teams of oversight in every county. And Harvey keeps going, we can do this. But, you know, PDA tried to get citizen teams in every congressional district for 15 years and we couldn't manage it. So I, I don't want to do that. I want to do this one surrender thing because it's the one I saw grab everybody. And ironically, where there's electronic poll books, they're going to be able to remedy it. That's right. Quicker. And then they'll have, as Bob pointed out, they'll have a scheme on the digital end of some yep. sort. So, you know, whack-a-mole. But I want to get this one straight because activists have said, I want a hand-marked paper ballot. We may be getting them. So we need to observe the rules around them. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And to add to that, Mimi, if it does wind up going all vote by mail, 98% of every ballot cast in this country will be counted on a digital scanner that creates an image. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that's... Uh, amazing. Uh, it's amazing to know Even that. Even at ES&S place, right? Even corrupt yes. Shelby. Yes. If I well, may... Yeah, of course. If, if they go vote by mail, they have to. But I'm saying, so even they That's were right. creating a ballot exactly. image from the handbook. So their scheme, John, yeah. will be yeah. conveniently don't get that mail ballot to those That's people. Right. And it will also take out all of these ballot marking devices because you can't mail that, okay? And uh, you but know, they'll have that option for the people who never got their mail ballot. And if you never got your mail ballot, you're going to have to use that at the polls to be your only way to vote. Only it'll have to if be there is any polls open. That's if the big debate, are. and that's yeah. a big if. That's true. That's that's true. right. In November, Mimi, thank you very much. Yes, if we only had more people like you who would take one issue, yes. do what you're talking about doing, keeping hyper focused, just <laughs> like what I do with images. I mean. This is how we're going to win this battle and uh, spreading hope and getting out there and showing people that people can make a difference. And every, as Kennedy would say, and everybody should try, you know, I mean, it's, it's that kind of thinking. So thank you so much. Okay, great. All right. So, and Bob, any uh, last minute words or? No, I, I think of course we, uh, we've got to keep in mind the PDA's unique historical mm -hmm. role and how important they were in the partisan sector for willing to actually say somebody's tampering with the mm -hmm. ballot. Uh, and a lot of that was due to Mimi uh, hey. Kennedy uh, pushing that role and allowing the election integrity people in when virtually nobody, and to this day, the, the Bernie folks aren't, uh, uh, we're never quite up to it. So uh, we've got to remember the unique contribution of PDA. Yay. I believe that. Boy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> okay. Music to my ears. Okay. okay.